let's get started on another problem. Our software helps a chocolate factory to manage its production. A package can store a different number of kilos. For example, 1 kilo, 5 kilos, 10 kilos. These boxes can be filled with the two types of bars they produce. Small bars, which have 1 kilo each, and big bars, which have 5 kilos each. Given the total amount of kilos we want in a package, the program should return the number of small bars that we need to use. Given that, we should always use the maximum number of big bars we can before using the small bars. Or return minus one if there is no solution. As a developer, let's suppose we already worked on an implementation for this problem, which you can see here. If you pay attention to the code, you will see two parts. The first part calculates the maximum number of big bars we can use, given the total kilos we should produce and the number of big bars we have. The second part then calculates the remaining kilos we still need to fulfill with small bars. We also check if we have enough small bars. If, we, if not, we return minus one. The best way for you to understand this algorithm is to pause this video, get a piece of paper and perform some simulations. Keep track of each variable and see what happens to the code given some inputs. OK, let's now make sure this piece of code actually works. First thing we should do is to think about the partitions we want to exercise. Take a moment here, pause the video again and think about them. A tip. There are four partitions. We see four partitions. The first one is when the total is higher than the amount of small and big bars, meaning there are not enough bars to produce the package. And then uh, we should return minus one. A concrete instance for this partition can be small equals to one, big equals to one, and total equals to 10. With total being 10, it is impossible to produce a package. We don't have enough bars. Another partition is when we don't need small bars, as only using big bars is enough. An instance for this partition can be small equals to 5, big equals to 3, and total equals to 10. With total being 10, we can use two big bars. There is no need for small bars, and thus the program must return 0. Then, we may need both big and small bars in the package. For example, for small equals to 5, big equals to 3, and total equals to 17, we must use the three big bars we have and complement it with two small bars. Thus, the program should return 2. And finally, we may need uh, only small bars. If small equals 4, big equals 2, and total equals 3 kilos, then we can't use the big bars. After all, they are 5 kilos each. So we should only use our small bars, which in this case means three small bars. And thus, the program must return three. If we automate the four partitions we thought about using JUnit, the test for the first partition will look like this. We name the test as total is too big, so that we can understand that this test uh, is about. We instantiate the class under test and invoke the method under test, passing a concrete input that represents uh, that partition. In this case, small equals 1, big equals 1, total equals 10. As soon as the method returns a result, we then assert that the result is minus 1. We repeat this process for the other partitions. The next test is only big bars. We pass 5, 3, and 10 to the calculate method, and we assert that the result is 0. The first two tests are now automated, but we still have two more to go. This is your task in the next exercise. Good luck! 